¿Qué? Who is she that looketh forth as the morning, hmm? fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners? God's plan of the ages for the church of God was complete before the foundation of the world, <coughs> that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. In 28 AD, on Mount Patin, Jesus Christ founded the church of God, ordaining 12, that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach. Built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, Jesus assured his disciples that he would build his church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon the cross of Mount Calvary, Jesus Christ provided for mankind salvation, sanctification, divine healing, and purchased the church of God with his own blood. After his resurrection, he commissioned the church to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Empowered by the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, the Church of God continued under theocracy and became witnesses of Jesus Christ both in Jerusalem and in all mm -hmm. Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth. Fiercely persecuted and scattered, this handful of corn planted upon the top of the mountains flourished like grass of the earth, causing men to exclaim, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. But by June 14, 325 AD, prosperity and public acceptance had taken its toll. As prophesied, grievous wolves, speaking perverse things, had entered the Church of God. A council of bishops called together by Roman Emperor Constantine adopted the Nicene Creed. The Church of God, covered over with the creeds of men and doctrines of devils, was plunged into apostasy. For the next 1,578 years, darkness covered the earth and gross darkness the people. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. Finally, glimmers of God's mercy began to pierce the darkened world, revealing the truth to men once again. By 1455, the Gutenberg printing press began to mass produce Bibles for the common man. In 1517, Martin Luther received divine understanding of justification by faith. In 1611, an English translation of the Christian Bible, known as the Authorized King James Version, was printed. In the 1700s, John Wesley began teaching and preaching the doctrine of sanctification and holiness. In the 1800s, Dr. Albert Simpson began preaching divine healing. In 1896, a mighty latter rain revival burst forth in the mountains of eastern North Carolina at the Sheriff Schoolhouse. Over 100 were baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire and spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance, fulfilling the last day prophecy of the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. In those days will I pour out my Spirit. For such a time as this, God had already prepared a man. On June 13, 1903, in Cherokee County, North Carolina, Ambrose Jessup Tomlinson climbed to the top of Burger Mountain to pray and prevail, receiving a divine revelation of the last day's Church of God. The psalmist had prophesied 
Lo, we heard of it in Ephrata. We found it in the fields of the wood. A.J. Tomlinson records the events in the historic meeting with a group of believers at Barney Creek. I came back down the mountain and entered the meeting. Questions were asked. Bible answers were given. They said they took the whole Bible, rightly divided, as their only rule of faith and practice. I said, well, if you take the whole Bible, rightly divided, that makes it the Church of God. The final veil of darkness was rent, and the full light of the gospel burst upon the world, never to be darkened again. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Yeah. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. And thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. Yeah. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. As for a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. Although last day scoffers, walking after their own lust, and lust disrupted the church of God in 1923 and again in 1993, Righteous watchmen were called upon by the Holy Ghost to solemnly and earnestly contend for the faith, ask for the old past, and to lift up a standard for the people. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth. Yeah. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far, and thy daughters cool. shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged. Because of the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. And he will lift up an ensign to the nations from far, and he will hiss unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with speed swiftly.